uh, before I start my talk, I want to um, thank the Prince Albert again once more for the work he is doing with his foundation. It's a tough act to follow, so I stand here being indeed very humble because what he is doing on uh, biodiversity, climate change, or water, I had the opportunity to get a little bit more exposed to that and hear it from himself, and it is uh, truly impressive. If just a few more people could do that and scale it up, we would have less challenges around in the world, so I thank you for that. The, uh, thank you also, Chris, and the uh, BASD for the opportunity to, uh, to be here and speak to you all. I just came back from the uh, G20, in fact, Chris as well and myself, we just flew in this morning, and this is our first event here at Rio. But as I reflected in the plane coming here on the G20, I, it just started daunting on me that never ever in the history of mankind have we been so forewarned about what is going to happen and never ever have we been actually so forearmed with tools to do something about it and yet there is this enormous paralysis that can only be filled by responsible business can only be filled by people like yourself here in the room the real leaders who care who care about this planet and who care about their children and future generations so i really hope that as you are here You've made a commitment to do something about it, otherwise you wouldn't be in Rio. And I certainly hope that you can put your energies together to really show the world that it can be done and that we can be responsible in finding solutions to some of these burning challenges. The need for this summit is great, and we do count on each and all of us. The need to advance a sustainable and equitable economy is urgent. Now, I'm not going to remind you here about the state where the planet is in, because I think you've gotten a fair dose already of that. But what I want to say to you is that we have a huge opportunity here and a huge opportunity to grasp. We shouldn't come from this from a scarcity mentality or a threat. This is an opportunity that anybody who seizes this will have a very bright future. We're a planet that still have two billion more people coming in, many entering the middle class, and that's a good thing. We have more people educated than ever before, a young population that is energetic and wants to be part of this society. And anybody who can figure that out, to do that in a way that doesn't use or overuse our scarce resources, will be handsomely rewarded. These are good times for responsible business. But it's also clear that if you look at the crisis of 2008, that we need to move more from a rule-based society to what I call a society based, based on ethics values and purpose. In fact, if you look to 2008, I, don't, I believe it was not a breakdown of rules that actually has led us to a world of resource scarcity or fiscal crisis or inequality. It was more a breakdown of values. In fact, not many people went to jail in 2008 for breaking the rules, but a lot of them should have for breaking some common ethical values that I think the fabric of this society depends on for many years to come. In fact, Adam Smith, if he were alive today, he would not recognize our current economic model. I know there's a lot of discussions about capitalism, but actually he did warn of the dangers of the charts towards wealth creation that actually leaves too many people behind. We can only imagine what he would have said about resource scarcity and the income disparity that we see today. It certainly isn't the wealth of nations that he imagined for any scholars here of his studies. Now, Murray Strong, was the chair of the Stockholm Conference on the Human Environment in 1972, opened the summit with a remark. He said, man is unlikely to succeed in managing his relationship with nature unless in the course of it he learns to manage better the relations between man and man. Now, we live in a world which is not delivering the basic needs for billions of people. If the system doesn't deliver, people's needs, the system won't last long. As you've seen with the Occupy Wall Street movement, there are too many people on this earth that feel that the system is not working for them or that they're excluded. And any system that is not in equilibrium is simply not going to last. That's why you see the Arab Spring, that's why you see the Occupy Wall Street movements, when people collectively challenge the system that doesn't deliver for them. And if you talk to them, I went out quite often to St. Paul's, which happens to be next to my office. It is certainly worth listening to them because they have a point. Now, Rio plus 20 represents a moment to address these failures 
by recalibrating capitalism to make it sustainable and equitable. In fact, when I joined Unilever three and a half years ago as the CEO, I read a lot about Lord Lever at that time, and he called it already then, nearly 100 years ago, responsible capitalism. The opportunity is in our hands, not just to agree to work together to do this, but to agree on a joint plan of action between civil society, business, and government for a sustainable future. Now, I have three thoughts for you that I want to leave with you during this lunch. First, we do have good reasons to be optimistic. I think good leaders see opportunities, not scarcities. Now, before the UN summit in Stockholm in 1972, most governments didn't even have an environmental minister. Today, it's the environment ministers for every UN member state that will negotiate here next Friday. In Rio, 1992, world leaders recognized that economic development had to go hand in hand with social progress and protecting the environment. Today, as Gro Brundtland said, the idea of sustainable development definitely has revolutionized the thinking of millions. Governments created the UNFCCC to tackle the climate changes. They created the Millennium Development Goals to tackle poverty. The World Business Council for Sustainable Development came out of this. I'm also pleased that some indicators are working for us. The rate of deforestation in the Amazon here in Brazil is actually at its lowest in two decades. Still too high, but the trend at least is encouraging. Progress is happening. And it's these Earth summits that have reframed the way we think about the economy and the world. So what we decide to do here and now, and how far we stretch ourselves over the next few days, will make a difference. Secondly, the opportunity for business has never been greater. There is only so far governments can advance sustainable development. The time has come for business to step up and step up to the plate. Rio Plus 20 represents the missing link in sustainable development, the active participation of responsible business. Business and business leaders have a moral obligation to, to step up to this challenge. We all share one planet, and it's up to us to all play our parts. And crucially, the business case is clear, as I laid out. Consumers are demanding responsible business. The security of our supply chain demands we develop sustainable business models. The opportunity is great. Sustainable business will drive forward investment, skills, and innovation. Yes, it does generate growth, especially when the world needs it most. Now, many, many businesses are already acting it, but simply not enough to move markets. I know I'm talking here to this audience that I'm preaching to the converted. So the challenge for all of us in this room in my opinion, is to go out there. Go out there and convince others to join us. We have to go beyond the coalition of converted to achieve this critical mass. We need to go beyond pilot projects to market transformation in the way that Unilever and the Global Consumer Goods Forum have pledged to eliminate deforestation, or illegal deforestation, if you want to, from the supply chain by 2020. And that is how we will achieve scale. The third thing, and last, is we must go beyond collaboration and focus on the joint action, far more important. Public-private partnership is crucial, but to achieve scale, we need an overarching framework to maximize our efforts. We need a joint setup of sustainable development goals, established with the input of civil society, business, and government. We won't get these goals agreed here but we can get the principles established for making them ambitious and effective if we work together and put pressure on ourselves in these few days to deliver. We owe it to the future generations to act now. But we in this room cannot agree this amongst ourselves. We have to go out there and convince everybody else. Let's begin today. I'm reminded when I read Al Gore's uh, latest uh, paper on uh, his uh, impact investment organization, he ended there with a quote from Benjamin Franklin, and it actually said, you may delay, but time will not, and lost time is never gained again. Thanks for your attention.